So let me just spend a minute now for the mothers who probably do know something about investing on some level. There's just a few points that I want to focus on. You must diversify your assets. Well, what does that mean? It means that you must have a mix of stocks and bonds and other types of assets, such as real estate. And you also need to think about geographic diversification. I believe that in our lifetimes, the US dollar will lose its prominence as the world's reserve currency. And I believe that we will see a period of meaningful inflation. So you can't just own paper assets like cash or stock or bonds. You need to own some real assets. For example, real estate. Now this doesn't mean the end of the world for the US or anything like that. It just means that you should have some exposure to economies outside of the US. For example, a stock that we own in our fund. You may or may not have heard of it, Yum Brands. Yum Brands owns KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. And they do a third of their business in India and China. And we want that exposure in our fund. But it's a, we want it through a US-based company with US accounting. That's important to us. And it's probably a good idea to own some other currencies as well, like the Canadian dollar, for example. It's just one example. And you can buy currencies just like you buy a stock. Another thing, do not be swayed by the herd. Human emotions, specifically greed and fear, rule the market. And you can't let yourself buy into either the euphoria, say of the internet bubble, or the panic in the depths of 08. You have to stay the course. And I have learned from being on financial news that we need to have the story sound as exciting and dramatic as possible, whether it's good or bad, because we need people to think they need to watch. And so remember that when you're watching financial news. Now back to you young girls. This is important. You're just starting out, and you may very well lose money. I still have periods where I lose money, but that's part of the lesson. You'll learn the idea of risk and diversification, and you may experience the joys of gains, and the pain of losses. And you will learn that you can never have all your eggs in one basket. And it's up to you to decide how much of your income you want to have saved, how much you want to invest. But for me, we tell our kids, save some, invest some, give some to charity, and spend some. It's up to you to decide each ratio. Now, let's look at the flip side of saving, spending. Please, we're all Jewish women here. What we know about spending could fill the public library. <laughs> but you have to spend wisely. My girlfriend, Jean Chatsky, who is now a well-known TV personality, as well as the author of many books on personal finance, which are definitely worth reading, tells the story of how when she quit her first job, she spent her IRA money on shoes. Not a good plan. You need to budget. You need to budget how much you're going to spend on clothes, let's say, before you spend it it's okay to spend some money. But remember, there is no shame in not being able to, to afford something. You don't need to spend. I know every mother's had the conversation with the daughter, the daughter needs these pants, needs them. Think about that. I promise you that whatever clothes or iPhone or appliance or whatever it is that you feel that you need to splurge on right now may go out of style. But having your own money, well that never goes out of style. And when you live below your means, and you start to see your savings grow, it's a wonderful, empowering feeling. No less a thinker than Albert Einstein said, the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Compound interest means earnings on this, interest on interest. So invest and save, invest and save. Now, young women, soon, during college, you're going to need to develop a plan my plan was this. After college, I was going to move to New York and get a job on Wall Street and become a millionaire by the time I was 30. I hoped I would marry and have kids, but I didn't know if that would work out. But I knew that I needed a job where I could make money. I want to encourage you to think about a career in finance. I always wonder why more women don't pursue this. I know it can be a risky, high-stress business, but really these days, what business isn't stressful? And there are many jobs, like the asset management business, where you can have control over your schedule and yet still earn high rewards. 
Even if you think finance might not be your thing, let's say event planning is your thing, think about event planning in the field of finance. Why? Because that's where the money is. Ladies, use your heads. Also, it's not a terrible place to meet, meet, meet nice Jewish boys. <laughs> However, if you decide to come to Wall Street, and Wall Street is really just a vague term for a, any career related to finance, I want you to think long and hard before you go into investment banking, which is a very specific field. When you're your age, and even in your 20s, you don't think about it, but you need to find a job where you can maintain some degree of control over your schedule, especially if you want to have a family. And being an investment banker does not allow for that. I know of very, very few successful women investment bankers who also have a family. In fact, I think I actually know only one. So that tells me something. Having that career and a family usually don't go together. Keep that in mind. And lastly, and this is really important, when you think about what makes a good husband or a good partner in life, you need to choose someone who is going to share the responsibility of running your home and caring for your family. When I was your age, I thought I wanted to marry someone who was a really good dancer. Okay? Trust me. That's not important. <laughs> when you choose someone who shares the responsibility of the family equally, or something close to equally, then you will have a choice to work, if you choose, when you have kids. This is so important because continuing to work allows you to continue to have your own income, your own money, and make your own choices. And I realize that choice of continuing to work is not for everyone. But who doesn't want to have choices? So, it's all about expectations, the expectation that you will and you must be in control of your finances, and execution, that you have a plan, that you have a plan for saving, a plan for investing, and a plan to make some money. Thank you.